Hi, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be learning about hacking into databases and finally be able to pull out other critical sensitive data like usernames, passwords, and the list goes on. And this is using a slightly more advanced method in structured query language injection, SQL injection. So right in front of us, I have open web application security project juice shop running. So this is a vulnerable web application system for us to run all of our hacking techniques on. And once more, big disclaimer, all right, hacking is illegal. If you want to do it, do it either in your own home lab environment or check out those bug bounty programs that's available for all these websites that you would like to test on. Make sure that they got a legitimate bug bounty program else you may end up crashing someone's website application or even dropping table which is absolutely horrendous okay so make sure you check on that first so going back to the tutorial here i have the juice shop so this is an e-commerce site and has all these different products and we have apple juice apple pomace banana juice and the list goes on so i can go to the top right corner and i can click on the settings click on web developer and click on a network tab so this will bring up network tab for us and i can see right here i can do a refresh and we can see all the calls that are being made into the website and this is important because if we want to understand the structure of the website how all these different calls are made and how we are going to be able to run all our tests on all our payloads on this is going to be one of those places that you want to look out for on top of the url the search functions and so on so of course if i scroll down you can see here we have different kind of files that got downloaded so we have main-es2015.js so javascript all right and so on and we have, of course, API slash challengers. All right, so API stands for Application Programming Interfaces. So we're going to be able to interact with them. And of course, if I scroll down further, we have API quantities and we have search. So I can click under search and I can see right here, okay, on the bottom right side, we have get, all right, followed by the URL. So, and of course, in the real world, you'll be going after a specific domain name all right and then of course specific port numbers if any else it will default into either http or https and right at the back you can see here we have a question mark q equal okay so this is the part where you can inject any of your searchers into and through the rest all right so rest stands for representational state transfer and then once you do that we'll be able to pick up those information and so on so the top right corner click on the foxy proxy click on the burp suite so we'll turn on our proxy to intercept our request. So now I can go to the top left corner and I can click on the terminal. All right, so once I'm on terminal, I can go ahead and turn on Burp Suite. So let's go ahead and enter Burp Suite, all right, and start this up. So now we're starting our Burp Suite Community Edition, okay? So we have here Community Edition right here. Click Next and click Start Burp using Burp Defaults. So Burp Suite is going to be our interceptor where we can manipulate the data, change the information, and then amend those details and send it over to the site to see if there are any structured query language vulnerability. So these are openings for us to hijack into the system. So now I can go under the proxy tab and ensure that the intercept is on. Okay, so what I can do now is to go back and do a refresh. All right, so here we got a following. So this is an interception, get slash. So we'll follow that, socket IO, REST admin application, assets socket io rest admin application configuration api challenges rest languages api challenges again rest admin all right application configuration quantities okay and this is the one that we're targeting today so we have get slash rest slash product slash search so do a right click on this and send it over into repeater so now i click on the repeater tab and you can see here on the left side we have requests and then on the center, we have the response and on the most right side, we have inspector. So this is a wonderful way for us to actually launch our attacks on and know and understand what kind of responses are coming back from the server or from the system. So here on the left side, I can go ahead and enter a particular value, right? So in this case, in search question mark Q equal, I can enter Apple and let's go ahead and send and see what happens. So I'll click send and we can see over here, we got a response, HTTP slash 1.1. 200 okay and if i scroll down further we can see here status success and we got a couple of items so we got id1 we got apple juice okay and of course we got id24 epipo mace so we got two items being returned as a result of searching so this is a critical part of any penetration testing is that we're trying to find what is considered normal what is a logical behavior of a website whenever we do a normal search so we get back results and we want to also understand right now 
to the file. And in this case, on the result section, we can see here, this is a return of a JavaScript object notation, JSON, all right? So you have status, success, we have data. And here we have ID one, name, description, price, deluxe price, image, created at, updated at, and deleted at. So what does all this mean? All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got nine results coming out from this JSON. So what does it mean for us is that we, whenever we're doing any kind of search query function and we found a vulnerability and we want to pull data out of the system, we have to ensure that whatever we are returning is going to fit into those nine columns, okay? And of course, if it doesn't fit into nine columns, then we'll get an error. So here, okay, we have done all sorts of testing and you can do all this testing using intruder as a function to check for vulnerabilities, particularly in the area of SQL injection where you have a list of payloads and from the list of payloads, you can easily send them over into the web application system to find those vulnerabilities. So we got a couple of payloads here and the first part is the idea about what we're trying to inject. So we're trying to union the table by combining and joining tables so that when we return the result, we can actually get back values of another table and of course at the bottom side as you can see here i have union all right and then we have select id email password followed by four five six seven eight nine so exactly as what i mentioned earlier which is the whole idea about ensuring that whatever is returned from the union table is that we can fit right back into the nine columns so if i copy this right here and I do a right click, copy, and I go back into Burp Suite. So what I can do now is to change the query parameter value of Q. So double click on this, and I can change the value over here. So this is the payload that we have created. Click apply changes. All right, so we have the changes now being applied. And what I can do now is go ahead and click send in three, two, one, click send. And we got the following feedback. That's it. All right, by the way, that's it. It's game over. We are in. We got all the details and all of the results right here. And this is really, really scary stuff because very quickly, we're able to uncover all these different details. As I scroll down further, the first part is Apple Juice. The second part is admin. This is literally an admin account over here. And of course, if you go back into the union select here, you can see ID, email, and password. So the first field is IDs one, the name, which is the email field, and the description is actually the password. So in this case, we got admin, all right, so this is the email address. So I can do a right click and I can copy this. All right, and we can paste it back into say mousepad. All right, so I can paste it over here. And of course, going back to Burp Suite, we got a password view here. And I can do a right click, I can copy this and I can go back into mousepad and I can paste this hashed value here. So without even doing any kind of technical analysis, I'm able to understand that this is a hashed value. And what I can do now is do a copy of this hash value. I go into any of your browser, any of your favorite browser, whichever the case is, I turn off Burp Suite. All right, I turn off the Foxy Proxy. I go to any search engine. And all I got to do now is just paste the hashed value over here, click Google search, and immediately on the first calculation, md5.gromrat.com. So go ahead and click on it. And right here, we got a following, okay? Convert a string, all right, to a MD5 hash. And this is the password right here, admin123. All right, so this is the value that we have inserted. We reverse it and we got back admin123 as the password. So how can we ascertain this, right? How can we confirm that we truly got a username and password? Go back to OWSP Juice Shop. All right, I'll close the network tab. Click on our account, click login. And now all I got to do is to go ahead and enter. Okay, in this case, we got over here, right? Admin123 is the password. So I can copy the email address, go back to the login screen. Okay, paste it right here. Go back to mousepad. And now I can copy the password view. I can go ahead and copy this. Go back to OWSP Juice Shop or any of those websites and click login. Oh my goodness, we are in. Look at the top right corner right here admin at juice shop so we are in we get full control of the entire user profile we can change the username we can change the email address we can change the password field we can change all of those things so really quickly you are able now to actually see all this different kind of hacking techniques and how we can join multiple tables together because the first table that you're targeting is actually the product table. But what we're trying to find out is, are there any other sensitive tables? Say for example, like the user table, the other tables that may contain personal information, credit card details, financial transaction records, and the list goes on. And it's important, of course, if you're storing all this different kind of sensitive data, you want to ensure that your encryption keys and your hashed values are also 
being sorted. So this is a key way of separation of duty to make it a lot harder for hackers to break in directly into your database if there's a vulnerability at the application layer. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share, subscribe, and turn on notification so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thanks so much once again for watching.